Our speaker today is Dr. Alexander Akopian, who is a numismatist specialized in the uh, socioeconomic history of Iran and the Caucasus region. Uh, after he finished his PhD, he became a member of the Department of Oriental Written Sources at the Institute of Oriental Studies at the Russian Academy of Sciences. He's been a longtime member for 20 years of the ONS, has written over 100 articles in, uh, devoted to general numismatics and various types of regional numismatics. Take it away, Alex. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, uh, good morning or good afternoon, depends on your time. Dear colleagues, uh, but firstly, I would like to thank Dr. Dr. Pankaj Tandon for uh, inviting me to give this ONS scholarly lecture and for his patience in choosing the date. So uh, the place, we'll talk about the Georgia and the adjacent regions. Uh, it is independent country now on the southern slope of the Caucasian mountains in the region of greater Middle East. Uh, its capital is Tbilisi, known in Arabic sources as a Tiflis. Georgia borders uh, on uh, Russia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Turkey, and uh, from the west it washed by the Black Sea. Geographically, it is divided, it divided on uh, two relatively plain parts, the Western Georgia and Eastern Georgia. Uh, Western Georgia called uh, Colchis, and Eastern Georgia called Iberia in the classic times, uh, with the centers in uh, Kutaisi and uh, Tbilisi, respectively. And uh, between these parts of the country lies the Lihi Range, uh, this Lihi range, uh, which connects the Caucasian mountains on the north with Armenian highlands on the south. There is only one pass through the Lihi range, and this is in this uh, seriously isolated two parts of the country from each other. So historically, they often develop different. The uh, 11th century, Preceding my investigation uh, was marked by the invasion of the Seljuks from Central Asia to the Middle East. They also conquered at Eastern Georgia only, including Tiflis, but state they created rapidly collapsed due to the internal turmoil associated with land fragmentation among members of the ruling clan. Just amid the collapse of the great Seljuks empire, the long 12th century of Georgian history begins. King David IV, sorry, King David IV, who reigned from 1089 in Western Georgia due to the weakening of the Seljuk power begins to move east and in 1104 concurs the kingdom of Kahete and Dereti, later kingdom uh, of Tashir, later defeats Seljuks in the battle of Didgori, then enters to Tiflis and in uh, 1124, he received power from townspeople of Ani over the former capital of Amina, city of Ani. So for the 20 years, a vast territory was united under the rule of David, who because of this began to be called Ahmash and Nebeli, that it's uh, uh, translated as a renewer or the builder. And in the future, throughout the whole 12th century, Georgia actively expanded in the southern direction, reaching its maximum limits under Queen Tamar and her homes. Uh, so both the Georgian-speaking territories and the Muslim areas uh, like the cities of Tiflis, the Manis, and the suburbs, and other cities of Transcaucasia, as well as the northern Armenia, they all were incorporated into the Kingdom of Georgia, and Georgia. only Mongol invasion uh, of the 1220s uh, interrupted the development of Georgia. So after the death of Rusudan in 1245, uh, the country completely disintegrated, that mark the end of the long 12th century. The Georgian coins are special historical artifacts of this epoch. On the one hand, they are characterized by the features that unite them with other coins of the region. But on the other hand, they are distinguished by the bright originality of their development. The complex nature of the Georgian coins of the long 12th century, many use language on them and their typological diversity led to the emergence of a large number of her studies. I will not be digging into the historiography since it's very huge. I will only note that studies about individual types include dozens of articles, often very voluminous, and some types have also been awarded special monographs. However, in contrast to such a detailed typological works, uh, these coins were significantly fewer, uh, uh, there were uh, significantly uh, fewer researchers devoted to the systematization. In general, only uh, Yevgeny Pahomov's pioneer in uh, 1910 
and some additions made by uh, uh, David Kapanadze in uh, 1960s can be used as a basis for it. Thus, to this day, the fundamental questions of that time numismatics have not been resolved. At the first, why did two parallel series of so-called regular in the bottom and irregular copper coins on the top were struck? They called regular and irregular because of the shape close to round or very uh, far from it. And the characteristic examples you see here. At the second, the chronological pattern of the issue uh, were not clear. Why did some kings struck the regular coins uh, while others did not? Why these coins were struck in certain years? What do countermarks on them mean? So the study of these issues was the subject of my research. But to reveal uh, the typogenesis of Georgian coins for the long 12th century, the crucial thing is to draw back on centenary and look at the coinage in the 11th century. At this time, coinage in Georgia was characterized by two different local traditions that developed from the preceding Abbasid coinage. One in the West, in the Kingdom of Georgia, you can see it on the left, and others in the East, in the Tiflis Emirate and in the Kingdom of Herat, you see it on the right. In the 11th century, in the 11th century, Silver coins of Georgian kings bear the image of virgin with royal titles and benedictions in Georgia. The typogenesis is based on the middle Abbasid dirhams of the second half of 9th century, whose transit through the Abkhazian kingdom led to the issue here local imitations at the end of 9th century. And a little bit later, the coin of Bagrat I in the imitative style. Having ceased interaction with Arabic numismatics already in the 10th century, the coins of the Abkhazian and later Georgian kingdom saved the Middle Abbasid coinage technology until the beginning of 12th century. The key features were striking, striking on the plain silver circles, skizzer out from the leaf, and design of obverse of Middle Abbasid type with a large central legend separated from the marginal text by a dotted rim. They also kept the Arabic name drama. The most important sign of the independent development of coin design in Western Georgia that indicate its break with Islamic tradition after the cessation of the Abbasid silver flow and the increase of the Byzantine orientation on, of Western Georgia was the use of Georgian language on the, on the local coins, as well as the uh, using of the Christian image of Virgin transferred from the Milarisian of uh, uh, Constantine IX. But into other politics, Georgia of the 11th century, the Tiflis uh, Emirate and in the Kingdom of Hereti. Coinage also has a source in Islamic numismatics, but unlike Abkhazian Kingdom, it did not experience an, an interruption of tradition at the end of 10th century. Technologically, stylistically, and textually, the Tiflis coins continued the late Abbasid monetary tradition on the, of the 10th century. Together with other economists uh, and policies of the Middle East, Tiflis moved in 11th century from silver dirham to bilon and then to copper. First bilon dirhams were minted in Tiflis in 1027, and later all Tiflis coins of the uh, uh, 11th, early 12th century, issued in the name of Jafarid Amir's or Seljuk sultans, was strictly copper. Technologically, the transition from silver to bilon and later to copper coins was accompanied by uh, an increase of the thickness of uh, coin circles, coin blanks, which at first still contained silver, but later lost it. This is how it was formed to what would later be called the irregular copper coins. Analysis of uh, coins struck in the beginning of the next 12th century testified the existence of three different coinage traditions in the Transcaucasia. In such an explicit form, they were not previously opposed. The first tradition located in the Western Georgia where silver coins were issued on light, thin blanks of uh, more or less uniform weight with the Georgian text and image of a virgin. You see it on the left. The second tradition was in the Emirates of Eastern Transcaucasia, including Tiflis Emirate, where copper coins were struck on the thick blanks of a widely varying weight, uh, which carried an Arabic text with the names of sultans and caliphs. And the third tradition was in the south, in the former Byzantine lands. 
So I propose to consider the uh, Georgian numismatic of the, of the 12th century precisely through the lens of the motion of the Georgian Bagratids uh, across the borders of territories with the different numismatic traditions. In my opinion, only such approach explains all numismatic facts of this era and their originality. So, after the conquest of Tiflis by David IV, the economical center of Georgia moved to the new capital where the Kapodirham dominated. The Georgian king no longer needed to strike a silver coin and started to issue copper coinage in Tiflis according to the local technological and textual tradition. The, uh, these coins were minted uh, on a cast uh, of uh, thick blanks of irregular shape and have only Arabic inscriptions as the names of Sult uh, Sultan Mahmud uh, and uh, of a Georgian king. The issue in uh, 1122, uh, in the newly annexed to, to Georgia Titlis, uh, fixed the use of the previously established traditions of coinage and by abolishing the circulation of silver coins in Georgia, marked its transition to copper coins. Two years later, the former Armenian capital Ani, hand over to David by uh, city council, thus David possessions forwarded to the old Byzantine lands, which local monetary circulation during the previous centuries was filled with, with uh, anonymous Byzantine folders, copper. The presented coins were struck here in uh, Byzantine traditions on the copper blanks tend to be of correct, so-called regular round shape with bold inscriptions and a mandatory large image on one side as a, cry, as a Christ or the, or the cross uh, on the coins of a Christian polities of a Lori and Dvin um, as the same uh, on the coins of Islamic uh, dynasts of uh, Saldukids and uh, Danish Mandils. It is clear that the coinage tradition developed here in Northern Armenia was completely different from the traditions of Western Georgia or Tiflis. This, in my opinion, caused David the build of army to strike a copper coins of a new local type. It was a coin of regular form with an image of a standing king in royal clothes with inscription King David on one side, uh, on the obverse, and his long title in uh, on the reverse. There is no mean name on these coins, but the production is reasonably to attribute to Ani. Uh, from the separation of zones of various numismatic traditions and the well-known history of the conquests of David the Builder, it becomes obvious that firstly, he abandoning the silver drama in favor of the irregular copper dirham, and later he formed two monetary zones, a zone of irregular copper with the center in Tiflis, and a zone of regular copper with a center in Ani. David Ford died in 1125, so only done his irregular coins have come down to us, and only two of his regular coins are known. But his, separate, but his uh, separation of Georgian territory on two monetary zones lasted for a whole century until the Rusudan's reform of uh, 1213. Uh, this indicates the deep relevance of David's action, which was based on the different monetary practice in the Western, Eastern, and Southern regions of Georgia. So David's successor, Dimitri, King Dimitri, was forced for, uh, fastly after enthroning to return Ani to the Shadowlands. Thus, he ruled only in a zone of irregular coins, in which he issued only irregular, only irregular copies. Technologically and textually, they are completely in the tradition of irregular coins of David, with one exception on the earliest coins, there was only Arabic legend, but on his later tabs, the Georgian initial of King uh, letter D was added to the uh, Arabic legend. Uh, his uh, son, Georg III, who replaced the father in the beginning, struck also only irregular coins in Tiflis, and like his father, he put on them only his initial in Georgian, while the rest of the text on obverse in the uh, Giri, the, so the, the, the geometrical star, uh, he wrote uh, his title in Arabic, and in, on the obverse in another Giri, he wrote the title of the uh, Caliph. These irregular coins of Georg, Georgi III continued the technological traditions of the previous Tiflis coins, but introduced one innovation into it, the intensification of monetary circulation, along with the low purchasing power of the copper coin, led to the appearance of double issues, as you see it in the uh, bottom, copper ingots of arbitrary geometry bearing two steps on, on each side. 
In 1161, Georgi captured Anu, but was unable to keep it, face it with the betrayal of the governor, and a more stable possession of Anu began in 1174, uh, when he was invited by uh, Armenian bishop of Anu. The accession of Ani was marked exactly in the same year by the coinage of the regular compass. They had a typical for regular coins, bright visual image, the king with a falcon. They are dated by uh, Georgian um, uh, George calendar, Chronicon, and they have a name of uh, Georgian Georgian uh, with the uh, Arabic royal title on the other side. Uh, this coin of Georgi demonstrates technological and artistic continuity from the regular coins of David IV, but sets a new uh, textual tradition. The reverse was completely reserved for King's Arabic title. The daughter of Georgi, Queen Tamar, at the beginning of her reign, was in very difficult position. As she faced it with the uprisings of the nobles and need for a second enthroning in 11. 84th in Kutaisi, and only after the exile of her first husband, Georgi the Russian, in 1187, uh, her power became so strong that she began to strike irregular copper dirhams in Tiflis. Typological continued the tradition of uh, irregular coinage of Georgi III, but textually already demonstrate the independence of queen from Islamic authorities, and the obverse became completely Georgian. Uh, the, appear, uh, the, 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 the most important that in uh, the Georgian site, uh, in, in Georgian legend, uh, around the uh, uh, Queen Tamar's the monogram, there is a marginal legend with, uh, the, uh, uh, with the name of the coin. Uh, here's a written, uh, in the name of God, this silver or that's flea in Georgian struck in the coin of Wahid Sam. That is a translation of the beginning of the standard marginal inscription of Islamic coins. The appearance of the name Dirham and uh, on the legend of the Tamaras coins uh, had his own prehistory. The fact that the copper coin, the Dirhams of Tiflis of the 9th, uh, 12th centuries that developed, as we remember, from the Bilon Dirhams that developed from the silver Dirhams, for a long time continued to be thought uh, precisely as a Dirham. However, the connection weakened over time because there were no other coins uh, opposed to copper coins. And there was no denomination of the coins which disappeared everywhere in the Islamic world with the transition from silver to bilon and then to copper. But in the second half of the 12th century, the dissemination that copper coins are dirhams for an unclear reason required some reactualization. For the first time, the name of dirhams appeared on the coins in Derbent in 1160s, then later in our debut, is, and these changes take uh, directly affected to the numismatics of neighboring Georgia, causing the naming of uh, the naming of the irregular copper coins of Tamara Vetsli, that is silver. And strictly speaking, the, the, they must be called as a piece of silver, since Vetsli, among other things, translation to the gospel Argeron, this is a piece of silver. And directive indication that a copper coin is a silver, that is a Durham. That's clear, this is Durham. Apparently, it was not unambiguously accepted by the population. Another problem was the fact that the marginal legend with this word did not always completely fit on the coin. And I think there was there, these were, were the reasons why most of the irregular co coins of Tamara were countermarked by the letter D. And the goal of this, uh, of it was the unmistakable connection of all the names for the copper mentioned in the legend, the Georgian silver and Arabic Durham. So this D can be umbrella term for all of them, and it can be only the word drama, Durham. The countermark D is, found, is not found on any other coins, except for these coins of uh, 1187. Therefore, uh, its usage should be associated precisely with the reign of Queen Tamar. And also, it is pointless to see in D countermark some new denomination like Dunk for example, because it is impossible to offer any other coins for the vacancy of a larger denomination, the drum. The fact that in Tiflis and the Tamara used only dramas and only of one denomination without any dings and so on, is uh, confirmed by the analysis of the, the synchronous poem, The Knight in the Panther Skin by Shotarus Taveli. Here, two concepts used denoted by the synonymous term drama. The first drama one, is the base and only denomination of the coins. According to Rustavelli, the drama one has a 
had a low purchasing power, which is indicated by the paucity of the purchases for one, as in uh, 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 Katrin uh, 1195, uh, where ridiculing the purchase of food for drama for as many as three people, or in Katrin uh, 5 to 8, where there is the idiom never will I give up even a drama, and so on. Due to the low purchasing power, a large number of dramas, one, were concentrated in one hand, which made it possible to describe uncountable sums through them, as in Katrin 668 and 1031. In the poem drama one, I use uh, with typical monetary predicates to buy, to barter, in the sense of uh, to sell, to give up, to give, to provide, and with implicit numerals. It is significant that never in everyday sense of the poem drama one is given by weight and is not weighed by the seller. This is the counter argument to the only one articulated in previous studies reasons for the synchronous mintage of regular and, and, and irregular cards. It is based on the assumption once made by Pachumov about the use of the irregular couples by weight in contrast to the regulars, which was allegedly accepted piece by piece. Today, this assumption has become dominant in Georgian numismatics, which must be recognized as, in, as incorrect because it doesn't find confirmation in synchronous sources. And moreover, operations of weighing or not weighing a coin for cutters looks very extraordinary. Of course, uh, Shotaro Stavelli has another homonymous term, drama two, which is measure of weight, uh, most likely equal to Iran and Iran. In this sense, the word drama two used in the poem with the obligatory predicate to weight, but no one bought anything by, with, by, the, by this weight. So as we can see, uh, the length of judgment on irregular coins grew through 12th century, from one letter under Demetri I and Georgi IV to the wall side under Tamar, while the other side remained pure Arabic. And outside of this direction, are showed here completely Georgian language coins with the names of Tamara and some Georgi. Uh, on the obverse inside the Giri uh, was placed the inscription, may God, God exalt, exalt the king of kings Georgi. And uh, on the obverse inside another Giri, may God exalt the king and queen Tamara. A home of belief that Tamara and her, here, uh, her first husband Georgi the Russian remain on these coins. And modern researchers return to this, this opinion. However, the time of the production remains unclear. But, the, but only Jordan text of, of these coins, plus the zonal distribution of typogenesis that was clarified earlier, uh, most certainly testifies to the production outside Tiflis and even Eastern Georgia, where it was mandatory to have Arabic text on the list uh, of one side of the coin. Therefore, they did not strike during the years of the marriage of Tamar and Georgi when the royal residence uh, was in Tiflis, but during the rebellion of Georgi the Russian in 1191. During this revolt, Georgi was crowned in Kutaisi in Western Georgia, where in the uh, previous 11th century the coins were struck with exclusively Georgian inscription. So during the uh, 1190s, Tamar did another Amine culminating in the conquest of Ani in uh, 1199. This annexation of the former Byzantine lands again caused the need to strike the regular copper coin for this region that was done in next uh, 1200. And for this monetary zone, in behalf of Tamara and her second husband, David Soslan, the regular copper coin began to be minted, which typologically, technologically, and textually continued tradition of the regular coins of her father, Georgi IV. And between the regular coins circulated in Ani zone and the irregular coins of, of Tiflis, there was a rate that indicates in the bilingual inscription of uh, 1218th, made by Georgian Catholicos Epiphanius on the Orthodox Church in Ani. This inscription, published many times but not correctly interpreted, is dedicated to the regulation of the conflict in the Georgian community of Ani. They arose from disagreements regarding pay payments for rel religious rites. In the inscription addressed to the um, Georgians living in the city, two names of coins known to them are mentioned as a synonymous, drama and pillory drama. Uh, the discussion of the cost for the rights and uh, the permanence of the zone of the right and clarifying the collection in Ani that should be restored in this way. Let these 100 pillory will save. 
for the right, we'll say, by the coins which has in one three days let be paid. First, the only inscription of Epiphanius had two messages. Firstly, the cost of the right in 100 spillover dramas dramas remained unchanged, which was important for the price sent from Tiflis, uh, where it was the cost of the right. And secondly, it was prescribed uh, to accept this amount in local, local uh, three dank coins, which they seem to be opposed to. These three dank coins, in my opinion, can be only the regular copper coins of Tamara and David with the countermark 3D, D3. That is a free dank. Uh, there are another countermarks on the coins of this tree type. The, uh, the, in my opinion, it is a combination of the number two and syllable uh, tar, that is two tar. The text two tar can be only formalized as a numeral and some abbreviation of countable uh, that makes uh, uh, it readable in the same logic, uh, logic as a uh, 3D. So we don't have any written information about the two tar. However, However, it's a typological and semantic similarity with 3D, that is three dangs, make possible to see in only the indication of the denomination. In this case, it can be only the abbreviation for a Persian phrase two tasu ha, that means two of 24th or one twelfth part. It was half dang of the Tiflis drama. Later, this countermark was simplified uh, in form two te without alif. So I will not go deep into the method of reduction used to make two tar countermax text, which, call, which is called as a, a contractura, cutting out the middle part of the word, but is widely used in uh, Arabic, as you see from exam uh, uh, by examples from the Gatchex uh, Encyclopedia of Arabic Language and Linguistics. And the fractionation of the unit into six parts, uh, and for example, one coin on six dings, widely known not only in Islamic work, but also among the Christians, as it used in the low code of 12th century written by the Armenian lawyer Mkhitar Gulf. Thus, it became possible to restore exchange rates between Tamara's regular and the regular copper coins, which line up in a fairly simple and logical system. Uh, in uh, 1208, Tamara crowned her son, Georgi IV, who started to strike from this year coins in his own domain in Javaheti in the zone of regular copper coins. Uh, these coins are strictly epigraphic with bilingual, uh, uh, they are bilingual with Georgian in, uh, and Arabic inscriptions. And the text of these coins is notable for the Arabic title of Georgi, who is not called as a king of kings because it was still title of his, his mother, Tamara, until her death, but only as a supreme king. Uh, that it formerly was a title uh, of one of the kings subject to Tamara, just uh, uh, Al Malik Al Muaz. But in 12th, uh, in 12th, 10th, Georgi IV was enthroned after the death of his mother and started to strike irregular coins in Tiflis. You see it on the left uh, as a, in, the, in, in the shape of a uh, fish. Uh, in, the uh, in the center of the obverse, there's a name of a king. And in the margin is Georgian inscription with the name of coin, again, silver, Vetsli, and the date, Kornikon 430. And the reverse has Arabic title of the king, but the marginal legend made in, not in uh, Arabic, but in Persian with the same name of the coin as a silver sim, and the date again as a coronicon 430. And uh, possibly due to the huge amount of the regular Tamar coins in circulation, Georgi IV did not strike his own regular coin. Only unique specimen of his regular co copper coin is known as is shown here in the, in the, uh, uh, the bottom, in the top of the, right side. On, uh, it is completely in the canon of regular coinage, but uh, Georgi IV was not inactive in the zone of regular copper co coins. In my opinion, he countermarked old regular coins with the countermark cross and angle. Sorry, you see here in the uh, button, uh, in which I propose to see the Georgian letter Khan K and the Arabic in the middle. So in total, this is the same text on his ir irregular coins, Koronikon 430, written for Muslims and, per and Persians on his irregular coins uh, in Abjadiyya, in uh, uh, irregular coins or in uh, words on uh, ir irregular ones. Uh, it reflects the process of deep penetration of Georgian culture by the beginning of 13th century into the urban, predominantly Islamic realm 
of the largest tra trading cities of Georgia as a Tiflis and Ani. We see here a mix of both uh, Georgian and Persian language and, uh, uh, and using in an uh, Arabic site, the Georgian date. In 1223, after the death of Georgi IV, his sister Rusugan was enthroned, and possibly again, a huge amount of the previous irregular copper coins in Eastern Georgia and regular uh, coins in Ani in, in Armenia apparently did not require Rusudan to strike her own coins immediately after coronation. So as a result, she does she 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 just uh, overstruck coins in the uh, by her monograms in Tiflis or by uh, the two letters of her name in Ani. Uh, in 1225, Khwarezm Shah Jalladi invaded Iran. His unstable rule in northern Iran and adjacent territories on south southern Caucasus was the reason for the absence of his coinage in these territories. But Jalladi sought to take possession of Georgia, therefore, in his most symbolic achievement, Tiflis recaptured back to Dar al Islam. He ordered in 1226 to strike the coins. They were of irregular Eastern Georgian type, but naturally without any Georgian description. Uh, he struck only uh, one type of coins uh, with the uh, uh, title divided on uh, two sides of coins. The influence of previous Tiflis coinage on these coins is clear. Even the benediction was carried out uh, to them from irregular coins of Tamara. And uh, on some dies, engravers even wrote the benediction in feminine. And there was no basmala with date because it never used on the coins of Georgian. The military situation forced Jalaladin not only struck new coins, but also restruck the earlier coins of Tamara, including countermarked ones and her predecessors, and even recent coins of Rusuda. Jalaladin did not hold any, so he did not issue. But after the capture of Tiflis by Jalaladin, at the end of the same 1226, his troops unsuccessfully besieged Ani, and apparently the failure. At Ani, in spirit, Rusudan in 1227, the Georgian troops briefly recaptured Tiflis, and in the same year, Rusudan issued a new coin for the territories under her rule, Western Georgia and Northern Armenia. These coins technologically struck on thin, regular round blanks, typologically and textually continued the tradition of regular coins of Tamara. The iconism and compositional construction of Tamara coins with the large image on the center of the obvious was saved, but the sign of Bagrationis was replaced by Rusudan's large monogram. In contrast to uh, this issue of 1227, ca uh, cannot be a sign of any monetary reform or any unification of the zones of regular er and the regular coinage. The fact is that in this year, the power of Rusudan did not extend to the zone of regular coins, where still was a Karzmishakian rule. So she could not carry out any reform in it. Uh, Pahomov attributed production of these coins to Kutaisia. However, the technological and textual similarity with the previous regular coins makes it possible to assume that their mintage began not in Kutaisia but in Ani. At the end of 12th century, in the Middle East, the silver coinage was revived. This new tradition in the uh, 1330s uh, reached Trabzon and then Georgia. So when Rusudan recaptured Tiflis in 1213, uh, in the same year, she carried out monetary reform. The issue of irregular copper coins in Tiflis was stopped, instead of which the regular copper coins of 1227 began to be struck, and the coinage of silver dramas shown here began. The cessation of the minting of special coins in Eastern Georgia, and thus the abolition of the monetary and fiscal independence of this region could be a result of the de uh, deterioration of relations between Rusudan and the Muslims of Tiflis, because they joined it Jaladin who carried out demonstrative anti-Christian actions in the city. The introduction of a silver drama required a revaluation of the old copper coins, which were also dramas, as we remember. In my opinion, with this reform is connected the fact that the copper coins were overstruck with this sign. It is not Georgian letter P, shown here, but only Greek letter Fita. Uh, whose writing with a central, uh, central circle in the line came to dominate uh, in Byzantine at that time. The numerical value of Greek and Georgian letters 500 has neither chronological nor counting meaning, so only the initial abbreviation can be seen on, in the counting. It is logical to assume that the Greek letter should reflect Greek uh, monetary term, among which there is only one suitable for a kappa coin and letter fe. I think this is a false. 
Such a choice fits into the logic of reform after the appearance of the silver drama. In order to avoid confusion, it became necessary to call the former uh, copper drama by a certain new term on the role of which, in my opinion, was chosen well-known name of Byzantine copper coins. The reform of 1213th ended the period of coexistence of two monetary zones in Georgia and Kingdom. And on this note, my typological uh, analysis concludes, the uh, allocation of monetary zones in Georgian kingdom during the long 12th century carried out uh, uh, by me and systematization of local uh, coinage uh, was based on descriptive descriptive typology and the well-known historical context of the expansion of Georgia in southern direction. However, no less informative is the short analysis of the existence of the coins, the topography of the coin hoards of the period of coexistence of two monetary zones. The description of the territories where regular and irregular uh, coins circulated made by, by Pahomov even into 1926. Uh, Pahomov's data on the northern and southern limits of circulation of regular coins are shown on the, as the plan A, B, and C, D. And uh, known to date finds of these coins with some clarification fully confirm Pahomov's data. Based on the analysis of coin finds, topography within the Kingdom of Georgia, the two zones, the zone of circulation of irregular A and regular coins B are distinguished. The, the later the zone B almost completely coincide with the land of Samheti as called Northern Armenia, one of the seven kingdoms of Georgian state. It was autonomous territory with the center in Ani that had self-government and in 1174 became a kind of a vassal principality in which ruled the family of uh, Makar Grzeli or Zakarians. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the analysis of uh, the numismatic situation in Transcaucasia in the 11th century allows to distinguish three zones of stable numismatic tradition, each of which was characterized by its own structure, a set of typological features. Formalization of these structures and typological characteristics of all three local numismatic traditions that coexisted in that time Georgia is given in this, in this table. Signs in square brackets reflects their patterns in previous 11th century signs and subsequent changes are marked in red. It turns out that the peculiar cause of the development of Georgian numismatics of the long 12th century can only be explained by the preservation of the structures of the numismatic tradition in each of the monetary region of the state. At the same time, the stability of numismatic structures, which did not follow the change of political boundaries, does not mean at all that the coinage of the unified Georgian kingdom, which moved through the borders of numismatic regions is, is the, in this period was weaker than the structures that existed in this region. This would be true if the original numismatic traditions remained unchanged. However, we see a fairly rapid adaptation of the structures of each of the traditions to the expression of a nationwide idea. It was expressed in the fact that uh, while maintaining the most fundamental parameters as a strict Georgian language coins in Western Georgia, irregular coin blanks in Tiflis and regular coin blanks in Northern Armenia, other parameters of regional structures were subjected to smooth changes. This process was reflected both in textual and figurative aspects. The proportion of Georgian text on the coins increased, the mention of Islamic rules ceased, and the Islamic ornament was reduced from a complex Greek to a simple arabesque. The long process of transformation of the structures of local numismatic traditions was completed by the Rusudan's reform in, in, of uh, 1213, which unified the copper coin circulation of Georgia. The outlined territory of regular copper circulation, the Northern Armenia, during the long 12th century formed a separate monetary zone in the Georgian kingdom, characterized by the circulation of coins specifically issued in it and for it. Coinage of the uh, regular copper coins by Georgia uh, third and Tamara occurred synchronously with takeover of Ani and was most likely the same was the case of David Fourth. Such a chronological connection makes us, us, us assume that the regular coins were produced in Ani in the political and economical center of Northern Armenia. The coinage for Northern, Northern Armenia was characterized not only by the special legends, but also based on other technological tradition, which also testifies against the production in Tiflis. The mintage of different types of coins for each region, as well as the practically strict existence of coins within the regions, testify to separate economic life in two taxation zones, 
if in Tiflis in eastern Georgia, the monetary part of Texas were, uh, was collected by the irregular copper coins, then in northern Armenia only by regular coins. But border between them did not break the mobility of the population within Georgia, as the, as, uh, the known by sources rehousing of Armenians in Gori and uh, vice versa, life of the Georgian community in Ani, as we know from the inscription of Epiphanius, and so on. It necessitated to determine the mutual exchange rates of the regular and irregular coins, information about each survived thanks to Epiphanius' inscription of 12th, 18th. Describing in general the numismatic history of Georgia in the 12th century, it must be noted that the reason for its complexity was the refusal of the Georgian kings to unify the monetary policy in favor of conservation of local monetary norms in the incorporated territories and for the step-by-step -step evolution. The existence of several monetary zones points to the complex structure of the Kingdom of Georgia, which, which, which structure can simply be reduced a number, to a number of regions, but within which a separate large area of a special monetary and fiscal practice must be singled out. It must be said that Georgia was not unique in the realization of such a strategy in that time. A similar situation was observed at that time in the neighboring El Digusit state, uh, which also uh, occupied territories with the different numismatic traditions. In the part of El Digusit state with the uh, old Islamic numismatic tradition as uh, Iran and Azerbaijan and in the Iran, in southern Iran, the Bilon and later irregular copper coins were issued. But in the former Byzantine lines, Byzantine lines as uh, Dvin and um, possibly uh, under the influence of the late in Ganja, the regular coins were mint. On the contrary, in two other neighboring states, as a state of Shirvan Shahs and in Derbent Emirate, whose coinage directly continued the old embassy tradition, the only irregular copper coins were mint. So, thank you for your attention. I will in time. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, very interesting talk.